Hello, my name is Jody Samuels. Today, in video number two, we're going to talk about three trading opportunities identified by Elliott Waves. But first, the disclaimer. Let's review the goals to help you develop confidence as a trader by showing you how to read the market map and to help you make more money and save time and effort in order to reach your full potential as a trader. And the tool that we use is Elliott Wave Analysis. This is a great start for you that you're here. Trading doesn't happen, trading success doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time. And as a trader, you're always evolving and what you're going to learn is that trading is about knowing yourself. A lot of trading has to do with the emotions that we face in the markets and every day is a new day. Every, every market brings new emotions. So sit back and enjoy the rest of this video. In this video, video number two, we're going to learn about the trader's roadmap for taking trades. We're going to talk about technical indicators and Elliott Wave analysis and the three essential rules to identify stop losses. And we're going to put it all together with high probability trades. First, a little review of the basic wave patterns discussed in video number one. The basic five wave structure in a rising market or an uptrend is called an impulsive or emotive move and it consists of three upward movements that are separated by two downward movements. This is your basic five wave structure. What's important to understand here is that it, the impulsive or the trend or the motive waves move with the predominant trend. In this case it's an uptrend and the corrective wave moves against the predominant uptrend. This uptrend is followed by a corrective structure correcting the uptrend. And it is here where you can run your Fibonacci tool between the starting point and the end of the five wave sequence to see what type of correction might ensue. And the corrective structure consists of two downward movements that are separated by one upward movement. This corrective structure is called a zigzag. It also looks like a, a flag pattern in classical technical analysis, but it is a zigzag and not all corrections are created equal, which you are going to learn in video number three. So for the remainder of this video, we're going to treat the corrections as zigzags. So this ABC structure. This is the trader's roadmap for taking trades. This probably looks familiar to you because we did introduce it in video number one where we have the starting point zero and the ending point T and we discussed the wave personalities. What we learned is that each wave in the cycle has a distinct personality driven by traders emotions. So this is the Elliott wave roadmap, the cycle, the five waves up and the three waves down. And each wave in the cycle calls for a specific trading strategy, which we are going to learn about, of course. We know that the Elliott Wave trader will make most of his bigger profits in trend waves and will need to learn to sit back and wait patiently during consolidation waves or pauses in the trends because a larger percentage of time is spent during these corrective moves. So on this chart you see we have the end of the trend at point zero and point T. We have our sideways markets for waves two, four, and B. And not all sideways moves are created equal by the way. Some of the sideways moves are sharp corrections, some are sideways. Some are simple, some are complex, but more about that when we look at corrective waves. And then we have our impulse waves, our trend waves, where we're going to be taking, we're, we're going to be riding the trend, and that would be waves 1, 3, 5, A, and C. So a few comments. 
Again, each wave in the cycle has a distinct personality driven by traders' emotions. We learned that the wave three is the strongest and the steepest, and that wave five sometimes peters out, and that's where we see divergences, momentum divergences, and double tops if it peters out. So each wave in the cycle calls for a specific trading strategy, which we're going to learn about, and five out of the eight waves are trend following. Okay? Five out of the eight are trend following, but a larger percentage of time is spent in the corrective sequences. It's also important to realize that each phase in the cycle warrants different position sizing and risk management techniques. Today we're going to learn about risk management techniques. In other words, where to set our stop losses depending on the trade that we're entering into. Just a few comments on position sizing. It doesn't take a lot of common sense to realize that you, you want to be in with a nice position during the wave three and lighten up during the corrective sequences when it could get choppy. Okay, so we want to be in full during the wave three and we want to be in a little bit lighter during the wave four, for example, corrective sequence. And the Elliott Wave Trader, once you understand Elliott Wave Analysis, the Elliott Wave Trader understands when to trade, when to stay out of the market, and how to place high probability trades. So we're going to take a look at that today as well. As an Elliott Wave Trader, once you learn to recognize the patterns that are evident in each phase of the cycle and internalize these patterns, you will develop the confidence to read the market map for any phase of the cycle. And where it gets really exciting is to prepare to position for a trend move which you know is about to happen. Once you get the sense of what a corrective uh, move market feels like and looks like, you just intuitively know when to sit out or how to position yourself for the next impulse or trend move. So it takes time, it takes, it does take work, nothing comes overnight, but I think it would be well worth your time to really work it, to really try to understand, you know, the rhythm of the market and how the market moves and when you should be in the position, in a position, and when you should be out of a position. And there are skills to learn, and in order to really learn these skills well, it, it does take practice. It does take, you know, working on a demo account and practicing. Now let's talk a little bit about technical indicators and in Elliott Wave analysis and how they work together. Back to our roadmap. Technical indicators don't really tell the complete picture. They tell half the story. First of all, we learn about two types of indicators, trend following and oscillators. And we, we're, learning, we're going to learn about them now in the context of our market map. The most popular trend following indicators are called moving averages. And the common oscillators that you're familiar with include the MACD, Stochastics, and the RSI, for example. But there are many, many more. But let's take moving average crossovers as an example of a trend indicator. They do a great job of getting a trader long in the case of an uptrend, even though they are lagging indicators and get traders in late. But the information provided from the moving averages lacks depth. Do the moving averages say anything about how the price action relates to the overall direction of the cycle of the market? Is the trend new or is it part of the bigger trend? If the trend is down, how far down will it go? What is the target? For sure, moving averages give us clues as to what part of the market cycle we are in. But until you understand Elliott Wave Analysis, you don't really know what to look for and how to use these moving averages. It would also be nice to know how to target the trend move which Elliott Wave Analysis provides. So if you're following moving averages, you're going to want to know what your target is, what, what you're targeting. 
Otherwise, you might take a position and get out of your position too soon or not get out soon enough and perhaps get in too late. So the other half of the story is told with an understanding of market cycles or Elliott wave analysis. And when you combine both, it's very, very powerful. Now let's talk more about technical indicators in the context of our Elliott wave roadmap. Elliott wave analysis identifies several waves to improve trading the market map. And the goal is to understand the larger moves and obviously keep risk to a minimum. So I'm going to show you how to keep risk to a minimum in a minute. But let's review this map. Point one, Elliott wave analysis helps to identify the trend. A five wave advance means that the overall trend is up. We've all heard the phrase, the trend is your friend because it's always easier to trade in the direction of the trend. It offers the path of least resistance. So that's number three on this list of strategies. Trend strategies for waves one, three, five, A and C. And this is where moving averages come in handy. When the moving averages are pointed up, and you, if you picture a clock face and you picture the moving averages pointed up between 12 and 2 o'clock on the clock face, in the case of an uptrend, you are in the middle of a healthy trend move and should take advantage of it. By the same token, if the moving averages are pointed down between 4 and 6 o'clock on a clock face, you're in a healthy downtrend and need to take advantage of it. Because again, trend moves occur, you know, maybe 30% of the time. That's when you need to get involved. You need to, you know, take notice and get your positions on. So in the case of an uptrend, using moving averages, you want to buy whenever price retreats back to the moving average. Kind of like a rubber band effect where price snaps back to the average. Okay? So that's one strategy, trend strategy using moving averages. And the FX Trader's Edge trained trader uses three types of strategies. Now let's talk about sideways strategies or corrections or counter trend moves. The three wave pattern is a corrective response to the impulse move. And understanding that the corrective move is merely a pause in the overall trend, it's very important for traders because these counter trend moves are opportunities for traders to position themselves in the direction of the larger trend. So this is number two on the list of strategies, sideways strategies for waves two, four, and B. And here's where oscillators come in handy. Oscillators don't work in trends. In other words, when an oscillator is overbought, you're not going to sell, you're not going to go against the trend because oscillators will remain overbought as long as the trend is up. So that's a fallacy. However, I like to use oscillators to get into the trend. So in this case, the trend is up. So I would use oscillators to get in on the wave two and the wave four and the uptrend. And I would, and if the oscillator is oversold, that's when I'd look to buy. Okay, because you want to buy on weakness in an uptrend and you want to sell on strength in a downtrend. You can also use the oscillator in during this B wave. So use the oscillator during the corrective sequences, the counter trend sequences, means the same thing, or the pauses in the trend, it all means the same thing, counter trend, corrective, pause. That's when you use your oscillators and use your moving averages to keep yourself in the trend. Now what's going to happen during the corrective waves? The moving averages are going to turn sideways perhaps, depending on the, the length of the correction. So again, if it's a sharp correction, the moving average, if you're looking at a moving average crossover, the moving averages are going to come together if you're looking at two different moving averages. And they're only going to spread apart in the 12 to 2 o'clock um, angle once the trend begins again. So once you pull out of the sideways correction. So again, use your oscillators, your RSI, your stochastics during this sideways move to get you into the trend. That's the best time to use it. Point three, 
Elliott wave analysis also helps you determine the end of the trend or point T. The end of the trend is evident on every time frame because of the fractal nature of the waves, meaning that the, the market cycles repeat themselves and form larger and smaller versions of themselves. So once you understand how you can link five wave patterns together to form a larger five wave pattern, you will feel more confident to buy in an uptrend or sell in a downtrend. And once you understand how to tell when the trend is coming to an end, you can begin to look for ways to get into the market for its reversal. So that is the first strategy listed here, end of the trend strategies at market tops and bottoms. Very frequently you hear, you know, that elioticians are top and bottom pickers. It is true for this very reason because elioticians project moves, project wave fives. Anyway, the list, I'll just give you a few um, things that you can look at for finding the end of the trend. And these are some of the tools. They include divergence in the oscillator, okay? And I use the awesome oscillator for this purpose. You want to understand candlestick reversal patterns, such as hammers at the bottom of the market, shooting stars at the top of the market, morning stars at the bottom of the market, evening stars at the top of the market, and engulfing patterns. And there are others. These are all reversal candlestick patterns that you want to learn and you're going to see them frequently show up at market tops and bottoms. You can also look for reversal chart patterns, which we're going to talk about in videos three and four. And one, two, three patterns, which I will show you in video four as well. Trend and channel breakouts. And most importantly, price targets for the wave five move, which Elliott Wave Analysis provides. And we will talk more about price targets and Fibonacci in videos three and four. So we've just identified three different trades. The end of the trend trades, the trend strategies, and the sideways strategies for getting into the, the trends. Another point on sideways strategies and using oscillators. If you're looking at a, a very, you know, a big time frame like a daily chart and you see that in general the market is moving sideways you can use your uh, support and resistance points and your oscillators at that point to capture the larger tops and bottoms of a sideways market so what I would recommend is that you if you're you know if you're trading currencies there's so many different currency pairs that you can look at have a look at the daily or the four hour charts and just flip through 20 or 30 pairs to see which of the pairs are trading sideways and then make a note and just have a look at them once a week because those will provide you very good trade opportunities for selling at resistance and for buying at support especially when you know the these markets have touched the resistance points you know, a couple of times prior and support points a couple times prior. We've talked a bit about entering trades on our market map, the three types of trades that, that we're going to look for. Now we're going to talk about three essential rules to identify stop losses. So when we get in a trade, where do we set our loss, our stop loss? And that's the nice thing about Elliott Wave Analysis is that it provides specific points of ruin. In other words, it tells you when you should be out of a trade if it goes against you. And how does it do this? These are the three rules that cannot be broken. And these three rules help to reduce the risk on any trade that you take. So the rules that shouldn't be broken. One, wave two never retraces more than 100% of wave one. I'm just going to read them now and then we're going to go into them in more detail. Two, wave three is never the shortest wave. And three, wave four doesn't enter into the same price territory as wave one. And if any of these rules is violated, then the operative wave count is incorrect and there must be an alternative wave count to follow. This is the first rule. Wave two never retraces more than 100% of wave one. 
And what that means is that wave 2 never goes below point 0, the starting point. So here's the started, starting point, the red dotted line across the page. And if wave 2 goes below point 0, then it's not, then it's not wave 2. But more importantly, if wave 2 goes below point 0, it means you need to get out of your trade. Let's say you bought a wave 2 retracement for a potential wave 3 move, and it, and it comes down below the starting point. Well, <laughs> you need to get out of your trade. There's always another train. There's always another trade. You can always get in if, if price comes down and you know makes a new low and then starts to head back up again. But that is your line in the sand. Get out of the trade. Now, if you don't know Elliott Wave Analysis, how do you normally define your stop loss? Well, most traders usually define a stop loss by the number of pips that they, you know, that, that they feel that they can lose. So if they're day trading, they set a stop at 10 pips. If they're swing trading, maybe, you know, 50 pips, etc. And maybe 25 pips if you're day trading. So most traders just arbitrarily pick a stop loss. But wouldn't it be better to define a stop loss based on rules? And that's what Elliott Wave Analysis does. It offers a way to know if your trade is wrong. Okay? And these are the, the, you know, the, the three rules that we're talking about. There are only three rules in, uh, in Elliott Wave Analysis, and they're very helpful in determining where we're wrong on a trade. So this is one of them. Now let's look at our market map. And here we are. So we see our wave two, and we see our line in the sand for a long position. Get out of the trade, okay? If you're gonna buy the way, we, we learned from video number one that wave two is usually a sharp correction. So it usually retraces most of the wave one, and that's because of the wave personality that the market, the traders haven't realized yet that the trend has turned around, that the trend is up instead of down. And so the wave two comes down quite a bit. It gives a very you know, low risk opportunity to buy with a stop loss below point zero. So we set our stop loss based on what makes sense not based on the number of pips that we feel that we can lose. Because if we have that attitude, if we, if we set a 10 pip stop loss just because that's what we've decided that we're gonna lose on every trade, well, it just might not be the right stop loss. It might shake us out of our trade and then the market might turn around and go back up. On the other hand, we don't wanna move our stop because that's the worst thing that we can do. So if we do set a stop below point zero and we got and we get stopped out fine, but if we set the stop below point zero and price is moving close to point zero and we think, oh my gosh, there's no way I'm going to move my stop and bring it down another ten pips, and then we price comes, you know, we're already through point zero and price comes down to that level and we think, oh, it's got to stop now and we move our stop another 10 pips. Before we know it, we've moved our stop 50 pips away from where we wanted to get out originally and, you know, that can wipe out our profits that we've worked very hard to, to make in, in prior trading sessions. So we don't want to do that. But that's really about the psychology as well. And once we define our rules and have it written down on paper, you know, there's a better chance that we're going to follow our rules and not change them midstream. Like it's really important to, you know, to um, follow our rules and stick with them. So again, the line in the sand for going long on a wave two is the point zero. And how would you how would you buy in a wave two? Well, we said that wave two corrections are steep. So again, you can use Fibonacci, and you can you know measure the 50, 61.8 percent retracement. It's really good to buy once the market turns around and buy on the candlestick patterns, and then leave your stop below point zero. And we're not going to get into managing the trade because that's another ball of wax. You know because once you're in a trade, there are things that you can do to manage it. And, and very important things that you can do to manage it. Because 
you know, we want to maximize our profits when we're trading. And we already have a sense that we want to maximize our profits during the trend waves. So there, you know, we have a good idea that we want to, we want to have our, maybe our, you know, a, our largest position uh, during that, during the wave three. But all of our position sizing is based on strict money management rules. We don't want to risk, you know, we might have a range on what we're willing to risk on any given trade. And, and maybe during a wave three, we're willing to risk more than we're going to risk on a wave one, for example. So that's our wave two trade. It's our corrective wave trade getting ready for the, the next trend move in a wave three. The next rule is that wave three is never the shortest wave. And wave, when wave three is the shortest wave, another count may be in order. If wave three is the shortest wave, it could mean a few things. It could mean that the market is gearing up for a larger move and it is just beginning, in which case it, could, it would be labeled a one, two, one, two or that this is a correction which will be followed by a move in the opposite direction. So again, in order to you know, know this, you, you do have to become proficient in Elliott Wave Analysis and see this in the context of the bigger time frame. So when you're looking at one time frame only, you're looking with tunnel vision. You always need to go to one time frame higher or two time frames higher to get context to see what the, you know, what the bigger picture is doing. So if you're trading a five minute chart, you might be trading a five wave sequence that is linked together with, you know, maybe that's, that, that's only a wave one of the bigger picture, but you're not going to see that trading it on the five minute chart alone. So that's the second rule. The third rule, is that wave four doesn't enter into the same price territory as wave one. In other words, wave four doesn't overlap wave one. So when buying in a wave four, make sure it doesn't go below the top of wave one. And that's, you know, that, that would be the line in the sand for the stop loss on a wave four buy. So let's look at our market map. And if we look at the wave four, the line in the sand for a long position uh, in a wave four is below the top of wave one. You have to get out of the trade. Now sometimes wave fours come very close to the top of the wave one and you, ha you, just, you, know, you just have to get out of, out of the trade. And other times when the wave three is extended and it's very steep, that's going to be a much larger stop loss. Okay, so it, it, it'll be a much larger stop loss to, to buy in a wave four and leave your stop above wave one. So you just need to know that because not all wave threes are created equal. Sometimes a wave three can go on and on and on, which means that the top of wave one isn't going to be close to the bottom of the wave four. So there are other you know, ways to protect yourself when entering a wave four. And one of the ways would be to leave a stop below the bottom of the wave four once wave five begins. So that's the third rule that we use to identify stop losses on our market map. Now if we look at the corrective pattern on the map, ABC, just think of it as a, as a one, two, three in the opposite direction. It's the same idea that if you sell on a wave B, your stop is going to be above point T, above the termination point. Just as if you buy on a wave two correction, your stop is going to be below point zero or the start of the move. Now, I think I mentioned this in, in uh, video number one, that the beauty, you don't have to be a consummate Elliott wave counter in order to you know, make money using Elliott Waves. The beauty of understanding the theory is that you can use whatever strategy you're using and just try to um, overlay the Elliott, Elliott Wave with it. So 
it's more important for you to understand how the market moves, how the swing moves occur, how the market cycles occur, than to really, you know, get involved in the nitty gritty wave counting. Unless that's what you like to do. Personally, I don't like to get involved in the nitty gritty wave counting. I would much rather, you know, have other Elliotticians do the counting and then I can look at their counts and either agree or disagree. That's what I can do. But if I didn't understand the analysis myself, then I certainly wouldn't be able to look at, you know, somebody else's analysis of the market and be able to refute it or not or agree with it. So what I'd like you to, you know, you to do if you decide to go further with this is to really use it to complement your trading strategy. What did we learn so far? We looked at the trader's roadmap for taking trades and hopefully we understand that a bit better now. We talked a little bit about technical indicators and Elliott Wave analysis and how you can use both together. We talked about the trend following indicators and the corrective indicators, the oscillators, and how to use both. We discussed how to set stop losses based on the three essential rules. And now we're going to put it together with high probability trades. What trading opportunities should traders exploit? On our trading map, we highlight waves 3, 5, and C as the trend trades we want to get into. And wave A is the end of the trend trade, the end of the trend trade, you know, to get into the wave A. So we have the end of the trend trade as well. So imagine that we are like lions in the den just waiting for waves 2, 4, 5, and B to get us into our trend trades. For example, let's look at trade 1. Trade 1 is a buy on a wave 2 pullback with a stop below 0. Okay. This is an opportunity to ride the strongest and the steepest wave 3. So if we can get in on a wave 2 pullback with a stop below 0, we're in pretty good shape. Now again, if we go below 0 and we stop, get stopped out, so we get stopped out then the market will make a new low and we, we look for this opportunity again. There's always another opportunity. So that's, that, that's a great trade. That, you know, that's the level one trade. But once you get into this and once you learn more, there are ways to add to the position in a wave three. But that's not the scope of this learning series. We're not going to talk about that. But certainly, especially if the wave three is extended, and you've targeted the wave three, you know how to do that. There are ways to add to your position in a wave three. If you're a scalper or a momentum trader, this is when you can get into your trades as well. And you just want to get in on all the pullbacks. Okay, so that's trade number one. Buy on the wave two correction with a stop below point zero. Trade number two is to buy on the wave four pullback with a stop above the top of wave one. And this is an opportunity to ride wave five. So again, I we just mentioned that the, sometimes the wave three is extended, it's long and the stop might be too wide, but that is a legitimate stop. So you can still leave your stop above wave one and then move it up as the trade goes in your favor. But if you do that, then you have to use strict money management rules and you have to take a smaller position because the stop is bigger. Okay? Your position is a function of what your stop loss is going to be. Because there's no way that you want to take a position in a wave 4 and leave a huge stop at the top of wave 1 and have it, you know, and, and have it be a three wave move and reverse and go all the way back and, and get you stopped out. So set your position accordingly. Let's just assume that you risk 3% on the wave 3. Well, on the wave 5, you might risk 1% and figure out what your position size will be based on your stop loss at the top of wave 1. And then, of course, as the trade moves in your favor, 
So as the trade you know, takes out the top of wave three, you can even move your stop loss to break even at this point. So that's trade number two. Trade number three is the end of the trend trade to ride the first leg of the correction A down with a stop above point T. And we talked about the, the various tools to use to um, figure out the, you know, that we've reached the end of the trend. And once you figured it out and you take your short position to ride the, the wave A, you leave your stop above the highs. Okay, that's what you do. And trade number four is the wave B pullback to trade wave C. Okay, so sell the wave B pullback with a stop above point T. And once we internalize the neat and tidy framework that Elliott Wave Analysis provides, we can then use the technicals to help us with our confirmations. So that's the beauty of Elliott Wave Analysis. We can use technical analysis you know, as in addition to the market map, but we've got to understand the market map. Really, what's the market going to do? It's going to it's going to go up, it's going to go down, or it's going to trade sideways. And you know, we want to we want to go with the trend. That's what we as traders need to do. We need to go go with the trend, or have a way, have a methodology to find the end of the trend. Okay. And there are many strategies to use with you know with this that we you know, that we don't really have time to go through. So now let's look at a different type of trader, the, the type of trader that you might be. What is your trading personality? If you're a day trader, you would use this market map. You would look to buy the dips on the five minute chart if the trend is up on the 15 minute and the one hour charts. So again, we're looking at the bigger time frames for context to gain perspective on what we're doing. So if you're a day trader, you might be trading the five minute or you might even be trading the one minute. And you're gonna look to see what the trend is on the bigger time frame and then get in on the dips. And when, and when you get in on the dips, that means that the, you're waiting for the five minute to line up with the 15 minute. Okay, so the 15 minute trend is up. You're waiting for the five minute to line up with the 15 minute and you're not bucking the trend. If you're a momentum trader, you might trade off of the one minute chart and look at the 15 minute chart for your perspective. So you might be you know, scalping long if the 15 minute trend is up. If you're a swing trader or a position trader, then you're going to look to buy on the hourly if the daily and the four hour trends are up. Okay, This means that the markets are in sync. So you, you always want to trade in the direction of the trend on the bigger time frame. If you don't, I mean, you know, you, you can go against the trend, but just be, you know, you have to be nimble. You have to make sure that you leave your stops tight and you get out of your position if you're wrong. I mean, it's really, I'm sure you've experienced selling, uh, selling a market because you thought that it was done, overdone, and watch it just go up, you know, another 50 or 100 pips after that. So that's why we look at the bigger time frames to gain perspective. So again, if you're a swing trader, you might take positions based on the hourly or even the 15 minute, and you're gonna look at the four hour or the daily for your perspective. And we can do this because the markets are fractal and the markets repeat themselves in every different time frame. Let's look at some market examples based on what we learned about today. These are the charts that we looked at in video one, but now we're gonna look at them with different, a different lens. We're gonna look at these charts with a new perspective, a different perspective. So this is example number one, a 15 minute Euro USD uptrend example. Based on what we, we just talked about, you can see where we would enter our trades and where our stop losses would be. So starting on the left, we would 
look to enter our trade for the you know on the wave two assuming that we did our analysis and we found the end of the trend we found our point zero the market moves up nice you know impulsively in a wave one and it corrects in a wave two we buy on that you know we, we have a nice engulfing uh, candle on the wave two and we know what our stop loss is going to be below point zero and so that's how we position size based on what the stop loss is going to be and we have a nice trade there for the wave three okay. for the wave four we decide to buy there as well on the wave four correction and we might have you know some moving averages on our chart we buy at the wave four and we set our position size based on where our stop loss is going to be which is below the top of wave one and that's a great trade so those are a few great trades now our end of the trend trade is also a good trade for the wave a we do our analysis to find the end of the trend selling it at the wave five and then our our wave b trade is a good trade if we sell we leave our stop above point t which is the end of the wave five so now we ha we've put this into the context of our market map and where our stop losses might be. Now let's look at the next example, number two, which is the euro pound cross four hour downtrend example. So again, look at that wave two pullback. It corrected most of, uh, most of the wave one. So if we, if we do sell there, our stop loss is minimal above point zero. And this is an example where selling the wave four pullback in this downtrend move would give us too large of a stop loss to leave below the bottom of wave one. So we would have we would leave our stop in this case since it is a sideways corrective uh, pattern. We could comfortably leave it above the highs of the wave four, above that horizontal line, actually. And then we have the ABC correction. Again, if we, if we buy on the wave B, our stop loss is below the point T, which is at the end of the wave five. So now we are putting our trades in the context of the wave personalities and the market map. Let's look at example number three. This is the S&P, same story buying the wave two for the wave three move with the stop below point zero provides a very nice risk reward profile for a trade buying the wave four for a wave five move with the stop above wave one again it's a, it's a bit uh, it's a, it's a bit far so we have to just reduce our position size based on our money management and again we're going to take a smaller position risk maybe 1% instead of 3% on the wave two trade. And we have our wave, our end of the trend for the, the uh, wave A. It's probably a great trade. Uh, we don't have any, we don't have the awesome oscillator up to see the divergence between the wave three and the wave five. But I can just tell you that with that steep of a wave three and that lackluster wave five, there would be divergence providing a nice end of trend opportunity to sell for the wave A with a stop above point T. And we use our Fibonacci tool to figure out what the potential correction would be and the wave C actually goes to the 50% uh, level of the, of the move up. Let's look at another example. Our fourth example is our gold example. And again, in the little box, we have the weekly chart and on in the big box we have the daily chart so you can see the five wave structure there again the wave two gives us a very nice sell opportunity uh, with a stop above point zero and you you see some nice doji candlesticks at the end of the wave two so we're always looking at the candlestick patterns as well and the wave four has a nice um doji candle a, a nice a candlestick pattern to to sell as well with the stop at the wave one bottom so we can use these stop loss principles in every market that we're trading on any time frame that we're trading we just looked at a number of examples ranging from the 15 minute up to the daily 
and that's because the markets are fractal and the patterns repeat themselves over and over and over again. We have just spent the better part of an hour looking at the Elliott Wave Roadmap to see trades setting up during the various market cycles we discussed. While it is so important to internalize this information, I feel like I was teasing you without really telling or showing you the whole picture. That's because I didn't introduce the wavy tunnel during the discussion. Now I want to talk about the wavy tunnel in this context. The wavy tunnel is an Elliott Wave system with defined trade setups to trade each market cycle. In my 30 years of trading, I personally have never found a better system, and I urge you to take a serious look at this and join me in this training. I truly believe you will never look back and it will take you several notches above where you are now in your trading. The wavy tunnel trades as we have defined them as we have defined them can be broken down into two types to trade the market cycles just discussed, trend following and end of trend. There are three specific setups for trends and two for the end of the trend. We specifically lay out a trading plan for each of the five trades, making it very easy to follow. How would you like to know exactly how to get in on a trend that you don't want to miss? How would you like to be told where your entry is, your stop loss, and your profit targets, evident from looking at the chart setup? The wavy tunnel does this. And how would you like to know how to find points 0 and T? Where to get in, where to set your stop, and where to take your profits? The wavy tunnel does this. The wavy tunnel highlights the Elliott Wave cycle elegantly and with visual clarity. The setups are clean and obvious. Yes, the wavy tunnel highlights the Elliott Waves. I have been using the system for the last seven years and nothing that I have looked at since compares. This is my roadmap and we will show you how to use this roadmap for day trading and for swing trading. You will finally learn how to look at a higher time frame and find your profit targets and get perspective on the time frame you are trading. And you will finally begin to make sense out of Elliott Wave counts without being an expert wave counter. The wavy tunnel is very powerful. Please join us.